Praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a blessing, amen, for us to be with you on today. God has smiled on us, amen. And as we always say, this is one more day walking on the topsoil. I'm blessed, amen, to be alive and blessed to be in such a wonderful place, amen. We bring you greetings from the city of Chandler, Arizona. Amen. And I am Bishop George McCree, and I'm the pastor of New Vision Christian Fellowship Church here in Mesa, Arizona. And amen. If you're ever in our area on a Sunday, stop by. Our services are at 2 p.m. The address of our church is 9350 uh, North Brown Road, excuse me, East Brown Road. And that is in Mesa, Arizona. That would be about a one block east of Ellsworth on Brown Road. So feel free and uh, to come on by and just uh, uh, say hey to us or God bless you. And amen, uh, we, will, we will treat you well. Amen. So today we are going to go to the word of God. Amen. God has given us, uh, we trust the word that, that will, will give you strength, will bless you. Amen. Uh, we want you to know those of you who are still challenged with different things going on in your life. Amen. That God is still on the throne. God is still a way maker. God is still a healer. So whatever it is that you're dealing with today, know for certain that God is with you. He has never left you nor forsaken you. But God is with you. So before we get into our lesson tonight, we'd like for you to go with us in prayer, amen, as we look to the Lord and ask God's blessing upon his word, that it will fall on good ground, it will not fall by the wayside, it will not fall upon thorns and thistles, but it'll fall on good ground, that, amen, it will bring forth in our spiritual man, amen, some 100, some 60, and some 30-fold. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we want to thank you for yet another day, for this is the day that you have made, and our choice is to rejoice and be glad in it. Regardless of the opposition that we face, Lord, we are making a choice to rejoice. So, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the things that you have done and for the things that you're going to do. God, those who are challenged with COVID-19, challenged with medical issues, challenged with financial is issues, challenged with issues in relationships, challenged, Lord Jesus, on their jobs, all these different places, Lord, that may bring us anguish to our spirits. Father, we pray against those things right now, Lord, and ask you to strengthen us, give us the wherewithal to stand, now, Father, for the task at hand, we pray, Lord Jesus, uh, the anointing of God that destroys yokes, the anointing of God that makes things easier uh, for us to handle, and we will praise you for it. And all the glory and honor belongs to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, tonight, we're going to go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter chapter number 18. That's Genesis 18. As you're finding that, let me remind you that the book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. It is in the book of Genesis that we find, amen, about God in the beginning God. We find the beginning of man, humanity. We find the beginning of those things that are on the earth and those things that are, are in the seas. We also find the beginning of human nature. We find the beginning of, of uh, love and we find the beginning of hate. We find the beginning of good and the beginning of bad. All of these things, amen, uh, these things that we are speaking about had an origin or had a beginning. So in the book of Genesis is where you find many of those things. All right, Genesis chapter number 18. Uh, we're gonna do a little reading tonight, amen. Uh, beginning at verse number one, and we will go 
Uh, I think we're going to go through verse number 18, and we'll hear what the Lord has to say to us tonight. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes, and behold, and looked rather, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed his, his himself toward the ground and said, my Lord, if thou hadst found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. And Abraham hasted into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quick three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes from the hearth, upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the, the herd and fetched a calf tender and good, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. And they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, It will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women, for she was in menopause. She were not, was, was not in a, an age, excuse me, in which she, she could give forth children. Therefore, now this is when Sarah heard it, she laughed within herself saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also, and, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I uh, of a certainty bear a child with which I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I, I, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Amen. Now, tonight, we want to uh, have our focus uh, on the fact, the very fact that God, amen, keeps his promises. God keeps his promises. Amen. I hope that the words that are shared tonight will give you encouragement in knowing that if God has made a promise to you, 
if God has certainly said that certain things will happen in your life, amen, you're not going to leave here until those things have been done. Why? Because in Numbers, uh, the scripture says, God said, I am not a, a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I should repent. If I said it, it's going to happen. And so today, be encouraged in knowing that every promise of the Lord is yea and amen in him. So let's, let's examine then uh, uh, the man by the name of Abraham. Abraham uh, is considered to be the father of faith. Abraham, a man we find out in uh, Genesis chapter 12, uh, the Lord speaks to him and tells him to, to leave the place in which he was and that he wanted him to go to a place that he was going to show him. Genesis 12. Now the Lord had said to Abram, his name at that time was Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram, note this, was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. So uh, this we find that God makes a choice. God made a choice of uh, Abram and said, Abram, I, I'm going to show you what grace is all about. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. So God's, God placed upon him favor that he had not earned. God placed in him, amen, uh, the blessing of God in his life. And the blessing was not only going to be to him, but it was going to be to his children, his children's children, his children's children, his children's children's children, and so on and so forth. And you are aware of that from Abram, uh, Abraham uh, came Isaac, and from Isaac came Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel had the 12 sons, which became 12 tribes. Amen. And so we find um, that uh, God did exactly what he said. But we need to focus for a little bit to see um, when God spoke it, did it happen right away? You see, this is one of the problems that we have uh, as people of God. We hear that God is going to do a thing and we expect it instantaneously, amen. But even when I look at the things that went on in the Bible and the miracles that took place in the Bible, it was not things that were instantaneous. We hear of the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years, and she says, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment coming from behind in the press, in the crowd. She makes her way, touches the hem of his garment, and she is made whole. Well, that's the end of the miracle. We think that was instantaneous, but the miracle really was that she had had this problem, a flow of blood for 12 years and did not die. Amen. So oftentimes, so when God tells us something, after he tells us a particular thing, recognize that it's up to him, amen, 
uh, to when that will be fulfilled. So in chapter number 12, when his name was Abram and his wife's name was Sarai, the Bible tells us, amen, that the Lord spoke to him and told him to get out of the country in which he was in. That's kind of interesting to me. It seems like when God wants to bless you or when God uh, has uh, a, a, a special anointing on your life, he separates you. He says, get out of the country in which you were. He separates you from family oftentimes or separates you from influences. And then he has an opportunity, amen, to deal with you and to delve into your life and you to, to learn of him, amen. And so again, the initial promise was in Genesis chapter 12 and Abram was 75 years old. So if Abram was 75 years old when this birth uh, was told him, that meant that Sarai was a man 80 years old when uh, the Lord spoke to him. No, no, I take that back. Yeah, if he was 75, no, let me say it again. If, if he was 75, let me get this right. She was 10 years younger than him, so she was 65 years old. I don't know if I, if I said that or not. So he tells Abram, go to a place I'm going to show. And he, he sends him to the land of promise, and that was Canaan land. Now, it should be noted that there was inhabitants in the land, but the Lord had said, you go for this is your land. And I want you to understand that oftentimes when God is dealing with us, when God uh, has uh, a blessing for us, it is, is, it is not without controversy or it is not without a struggle or a battle. Now, sometimes God says, well, I'm going to handle it myself. And sometimes he has you to engage in that battle as well. So Abram goes to, to, to Canaan land, and it is also in uh, chapter number 12 that Abram, a man, uh, is there, and there is a famine in the land. That's, that's interesting. God sends him to a place of promise, and in the place of promise, in the, in the place of promise, in the place of blessing, there is a famine. That's interesting. You see, so God doesn't want you to look at your circumstance and declare what that circumstance is because God has always been the provider. So if you look at the land, the land may have famine, the land may have pestilence, but if God is the provider and you are trusting him and he's the one that told you to be there, then you ought to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But what does he do? The scripture says in verse number 10, and there was a, a famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt to so, sojourn there for the famine was grievous in the land. I think that's, that's notable as well because we see the same thing happening, amen, uh, with uh, his grandson, I guess it would be his grandson, uh, Jacob, uh, when Jacob had become Israel and uh, he had the son of Joseph. Joseph ends up being enslaved in Egypt land. And when there was a famine in the land of Canaan, where um, uh, Israel was, the Bible tells us that he sought out help in Egypt. And so the children of Israel ended up in Egypt land. Amen. His son, Joseph, becomes uh, the prime minister, if you will, of, of Egypt. And he is over the, the, the distribution, excuse me, the distribution of foods. And they come there uh, to seek help. And there. Um, 
his his son uh, reveals who he is, and his he brings his father and the rest of the family down to Egypt land. So I thought that that was interesting that that both um, the 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 grandfather and the grandson ended up um, going to Egypt for help. Um, so this is, this is, I want you to notice that, that these are some of the things that happened in those uh, from the time in chapter number uh, 12. Um, uh, let me uh, move forward uh, to, to get to um, chapter number 18, but in your own leisure, it would be wonderful if you were to take the opportunity to, to look at chapters 12 through 18, because it really tells uh, a, a, a story of, of God's mercy, God's grace, God's deliverance. And even um, when we falter, you, you will find where, where, where Abram uh, is, is, um, tells a half truth he tells a man, the, 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 the king, um, uh, that this is my sister uh, because he doesn't want him to kill him because she was a beautiful woman. Interestingly enough, uh, Sarah was at least 65 years old and she was a fox at 65. Wow. That a man would, would look upon her and want her. 65 years old, my God. Amen. That must have been a beautiful woman. So different things happen. So uh, it, it, I encourage you to read it because there, there's is a wonderful, a wonderful stories. Sometimes we pick up novels and we'll read what what this this author has has uh, written uh, 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 this particular novel and so on and so forth. But I tell you, the Word of God has some serious stuff in there, and it it is. It is a book of ad adventure. It's a book of romance. It's a, it's a, it's a book of comedy. It's a, it's a, a book of of some of of the uh, cruelest people uh, in the world. You, you, you have. I mean, it's full of so many things, and I, I, I often think this because God wants us to know about all the things that, that we may um, uh, come through, all the things that we may uh, find ourselves in, that God has a story that is going to help you to get through it. There is a situation that has been presented in uh, the book of the Bible, and it was presented so that you would gain strength and courage and know that whatever God has said, he's not a liar, but he's the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus, amen, uh, the son of God is teaching us, amen, uh, that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And so, all right. Now, notice this. Uh, when we when we uh, begin to look at chapter number eighteen, this is twenty five years later. Twenty five years later. Okay. Amen. Sarah is now uh, ninety years old, and Abraham is a hundred. Or depending on when it was actually speaking, he could have been ninety nine years old, and Sarah eighty nine. Uh, because when she has the child, she is 90 and Abraham is 100. So, you know, whenever their birthdays were, amen. Uh, but I want you to see that uh, when we look at it, um, uh, when, when it, it opens up, it is, it is telling this story. Uh, here, the Lord appears unto Abraham. Now, oh, let me go back for a moment. Uh, during the, that 25 years after he had told them to leave the place where he he, he had uh, lived. Uh, it is during this time that he is away from his family that the Lord uh, speaks the promise to him again. And he says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And one of the times he says, I want you to look at the sand. 
uh, uh, that's on the seashore, if you will. He says, as innumerable are the grains of sand, so your seed is going to be. So the promise that was given in uh, chapter number 12, it is reiterated again. Now, it is this time that the Lord begins to speak with him and begins to say, uh, uh, for you to really to, 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 to grasp this, I got, I've got to uh, change your name. You, 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 your name is Abram, but I've got to give you uh, Abraham. And the, the, the ham is um, uh, the, um, uh, the Haya. Okay, it, it is, uh, so it is of God. And so for Abr Abram, he has to change his name to be in tune with what the promise is. In other words, what you've got to do is at some point in your walk with God, what you've got to do is you've got to begin to believe what God has said. And if you are an unbeliever or if you have not been uh, uh, born again, it's hard for you to grasp the promises or to believe the promises of God. So God has to first change it. There has to be a, a, a new birth. There has to be a change so that you can at least try to understand, amen, uh, what God is doing in your life. And so he changes his name to Abraham and then from Sarai to Sarah. Amen. And so, verse 18, uh, chapter 18. And so, he here Abraham is, the Bible is saying here, Abraham is sitting uh, in the tent door, and it's in the heat of the day. And he says, and he lifts up his eye, and, and behold, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the door and bowed himself toward the ground. Abraham knew that this was an encounter with something more than mere man. He, 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 the scripture says that he bows himself to the ground. Amen. He sees these three men. Now he's been um, uh, in the, the tent door, or he's, he's trying to stay cool out of the heat, and he looks up, and when he looks up, he sees these three men. Now, uh, were they walking toward him, or were they, they standing? The scripture says that um, uh, he saw them, and the three men stood by him. So was it a, a, a miraculous appearance? I'm, I don't know. Or was it just uh, them coming up? Uh, you know, sometimes you can you can be uh, your mind could be on one thing, and someone could come, you know, um, uh, in your peripheral or out of view of, of you, and uh, can come up and you can, it can startle you. It could we could see it that way, or you could see it, a man that these men stood by him. In other words, that that he was he was resting. He looked up, boom, and three men were standing by him. Well, I want you to you to see something here. Uh, first of all, that these three men that were were uh, that had come to him were um, angels. Now we've talked a man in in uh, some of our earlier lessons. We were talking about uh, God manifesting Himself in flesh, and and said to you that there were times in the Old Testament where God manifested himself. Sometimes we see him as, a, uh, as an angel, or uh, we see him as a man, we see him as uh, um, Melchizedek, uh, which was the, 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 the king of, I believe, of, 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 uh, of Sodom. These different things, the Bible talks about a manifestation of of God, and so here, here we find it here, and um, he says, "My Lord, if uh, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, or, 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 or don't just go by, don't don't continue 
on your your your, your journey. He says, um, uh, but take a little water, I pray you. Uh, uh, I will fetch it, will wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread. So he is saying, uh, well, what what I, I want you to do is I, I want you to you you you've been traveling, so it could be that 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 uh, they came up, they've been traveling. Uh, he says, let me get some water, let me wash your feet, uh, drink some water, uh, quench your thirst. He says, and also he says, let let me let me get you something to eat. Amen. A hospitable man. And so the Bible says that he um, he he uh, speaks to them, and he says, "They say, well, okay, uh, whatever's in your in your heart to do, whatever, uh, go ahead and do that." And so they 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 stop their journey, and there Abraham uh, is hospitable. He asks his wife. He says, "Sarah," he says, "Make them some bread. Uh, uh, get get some get some bread together." get some butter together, get some milk together. And uh, uh, Abraham goes out into the field and he looks at his, his herd and he sees uh, one of the young tender cattle. Amen. He see, he, he picks one that, that it's, uh, you know, if, if they're old, the meat may be rough, but oh, he, he picks a young one that's tender. And he says, I want, want you to prepare this. Prepare this, in other words, roast it, get it, get it ready, because I we have we have guests, and I want you to uh, I want to give them of my best, and so that's what happens. And so then the Bible says that um, that they um, waited there. Now this had to have taken some time. Okay, they had no microwaves. They didn't even have uh, ovens. Uh, what they had to do is uh, they had to uh, get the uh, find the the animal. They got the animal. They had to they had to slaughter the animal, and then they had to take the meat out. Then they had to prepare it. They had to cook it. They had, they had to roast it, and then uh, they were ready to present it to a man. These uh, three men, and so that's uh, what they ended up doing. And so um, the Bible says, and he took butter and milk and the calf, which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. So Abraham was a, was a, a hospitable man and he had prepared um, uh, a feast for them, weary travelers. Uh, I, I believe again that these were were angels, and the Bible does tell us that we uh, we should uh, be careful how we entertain strangers, because uh, many have entertained angels unaware. So it's it's interesting here that we we can can get something about learn something about angels from this this text. Amen. They were able. A, um, to appear or disappear, okay, or reappear. Um, they were in a form that could be uh, readily seen, readily uh, uh, recognized. They were men, and not only that, uh, but they were able to drink beverages. They were able to eat food. So uh, that gives us an, an, an idea, you know, some folks talk about heaven and uh, don't uh, think we're, we're just going to be there uh, without having, um, what would you call it? Um, not able to enjoy things in life. Well, they were able to enjoy a, a, um, a steak, if you will. <laughs> they roasted this this. This 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 cow, uh, this cow, and um, they were able to eat bread and uh, drink milk, uh, water, amen. And um, that just tells us that they have they had the ability. It, it was not. It doesn't mean that they ate out of necessity, 
but they they were eating uh, out of enjoyment. In other words, amen, when we uh, get to heaven, I don't believe that we're going to have to eat out of necessity, but we'll just eat out of enjoyment. Amen. And so that's um, these angels. They have the ability to consume food and to drink water. All right. So after they had presented, after Abraham had presented this to them, it is after this that they begin to reiterate again the promise of God for him and Sarah. And uh, they asked the question, well, where's your wife? Where, where, where's Sarah? And, uh, oh, she's, she's still uh, in the kitchen. And uh, he, they say that, hey, um, yeah, I want you to remember that the Lord has, has, has made you a promise that he's going to bless you. And indeed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Uh, he, he talks to him. Let me, let me uh, find that again. Um, he says, according, he says, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Sarah, uh, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Now, remember 25 years before, amen, uh, it, it was probably a close to an impossibility. But now she's well stricken in age. And Abraham, well stricken in age. And... Um, she had ceased from, 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 from having, having periods, you know. Uh, she had, had already gone into menopause, amen. Um, there was, there was um, nothing uh, that she could see. There's no way that she could see that she could bring forth a child. But I noticed this, I, as, as I said again, you know, read the, the, the Bible because there, there's some, some, some comical things in there and there are some serious things in there. And, and um, uh, notice verse number 12, that said, therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, I am waxed old. Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? Look at this. The angel said, you're going to, I got a message from God. God is going to, God is going to give you a child. You're going to have a child. Abraham is going to give you a child. And what's in her mind? I'm sorry, sisters. This is what she says. She's not, not concerned about uh, uh, bringing forth a child. What does she say? She says, shall I, um, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also, girlfriend was concerned. If She said, wow. She said, now I know that as old as I am, shall I have pleasure? I mean, sister girl was, was concerned about having another need met. Oh, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But it sounds like what the Bible is saying. Read it for yourself, shall I? Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? <laughs> and the Lord said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I uh, of a certainty bear a child which is old? Um, is anything too hard for the Lord? And uh, that is the, one of the major points that we're making today. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. If the Lord has made you a promise, whatever the Lord has declared, it is going to take place. You can rest on the promises of the Lord. God is faithful, amen. And if he said it, it's going to happen. It had been 25 years, 25 years had taken place and as time went on, the further that it went, the more the impossibility became. 
amen, because she was getting each day, each hour, each minute, each second, she was getting older. And so the promise uh, was becoming less likely. And see, we are people of time and you are a person of time. And time now becomes an enemy to the promise of God. Because we have, we have gotten uh, whatever age that you are, and, and the Lord had said uh, a particular thing for you, or you, my brothers and sisters, uh, have, have, have said, well, I'm going to return to school. I'm going to get my, my degree. I'm going to do a particular thing. And uh, as time went on, it became less likely in your mind. And I want to want to just just share this with you that um, uh, after I uh, graduated from high school, I uh, went directly to co to college, but I did not graduate. Amen. Things happen. Things happen in life, and it it got put on the back burner. Marriage came and children came and jobs came and issues came and all of these things. And I had said um, when I was then 18, I said, well, hey, well, I, I want to do this. I want to uh, have get my degree. Well, it didn't happen. I want you to understand something. When I turned 50 years old, when I turned 50, we had started the church, and um, when we started the church, I said, well, uh, that's given me some time during the day when I'm, when I'm not doing pastoral duties. That'll give me some time to go back to school online, and that's what I did. At the age of 50, I went back to school and uh, my sister, my sister Edna was a great influence in my life, and she had always encouraged me to do that. And um, when I returned, I didn't uh, tell anyone. <laughs> the songwriter said, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody that, I, but I couldn't keep it to myself uh, what the Lord has done for me. Well, I kept it to myself. And I, I went on and I um, got my, my degree, amen, um, in, um, in teaching, in biblical counseling. And um, I, I, I got my degree. And when I got my degree, um, when it came in the mail, I, I didn't, I didn't um, let anybody know. My sister Edna um, uh, was, very ill at the time, and uh, she went on to be with the Lord sometime after that. Uh, but it was so important to me to let her know, and and what a blessing! I remember uh, Edna uh, was was suffering with cancer, and she was staying at her her youngest daughter's home, and I went over there, and I had my degree uh, uh, in hand, and. Um, she was in in the bedroom. She was lying on the bed, and she was in 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 some pain. And I I got into bed with her. I climbed into the bed and and said, you know, uh, Edna, I love you. And I said, now I, I I want I want to show you something. I reached in the the envelope and just handed it to her, and it was um, my degree. And Edna began to cry. She said, George, I'm so proud of you. Um, that, that made my year, I tell you, uh, that, that she was proud of me. But she was the, the, one of the driving forces, probably the main driving force, even um, oh, um, above my, own, my mom. My mom was the second one I told. Okay? Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't for... Uh, how should I put it? I wasn't doing it um, for, 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 for people to know. So what I did was, it was so interesting. What I did was after I got it, I framed it and I put it in, in the office and went about my, my business. You know, I wanted to accomplish that. I accomplished that so on and so forth. Well, maybe, maybe it was, you know, three, four weeks later, 
my wife happens to notice it. And she said, George, you got a degree? I said, yeah. She said, well, why, did, why didn't you tell me? It really wasn't important for me. Uh, I wasn't doing it for that. It, it, was, it was a personal goal that I had. And I, uh, when I satisfied it, when I, I achieved it, it was satisfaction to me. And, and um, that blessed me in knowing that you can put uh, in your head that you're going to do something. And regardless of how old you are, I'm speaking to somebody today, regardless of how old you are, there are still goals that you can accomplish. And uh, when God, again, has made a promise to you, now notice I said, when God has made a promise to you, it is going to happen. Now, Let's let, let's examine this for a moment because I, I I don't want us to go go to the left or the right on this. God requires faith that we have faith in Him. All right, but that is only if you are the initiator of the um, of the request. If you asking God, Lord, heal me, or Lord give me a, a, I'd like a, a home, I'd like this, Lord, 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 then he requires, hear me, he requires that you have faith. What does it say in Mark chapter 11? Have faith in God. He said, when ye pray, believe that you will receive it and you shall have it. At the time that you pray, you must believe. So he requires that you believe that he's able to do whatever it is you are asking him to do. That's how he has set it up. But when God has made a, uh, an unmerited favor, <laughs> uh, has done something uh, of that sort, if he has done something on his own, if he has said, I'm going to bless you. Brothers and sisters, you may not have faith in what he has said. If he said it, if he made the promise, if he told you, amen, then you can rest on that, amen, because it is going to happen whether you believe it or not, because then it has nothing to do with your belief. It has to do with his word. And the Bible said of his word that his word would not return to him void. If God has declared a thing, he said that his word is settled in heaven. And so whether you believe, and you notice that Abraham, amen, I, I read, I, I told you of, of when he was in Sarah, he told a half a lie uh, to to the, the king that was was in Egypt. There were times that 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 he uh, he had missteps. Abraham did, but God was faithful. If God declared it, whether Abraham believed it or not, whether Sarah believed it or not, Amen. At the time appointed, that child was coming forth, and I've got to tell you today. At the time appointed, that's a word for somebody. At the time appointed, well, who appointed the time? God appointed the time. Amen. When he when he appointed the time, they did not know what it was. I, I let, let me see here. I think yes, yeah, yes. It says here in verse number seventeen. And the Lord said, "Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Shall I hide it from him?" seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. He says, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Excuse me. Understand something that God hides, excuse me. He hides some things from us. When he told, oh yes, Lord, when, when, in the book of Genesis, when uh, uh, the promise came, uh, the dream came to Joseph. Joseph was told uh, in the dream that he was going to be great. Joseph told him 
um, uh, where they, uh, the, God told Joseph in a dream that he was going to be great, that, that, that um, uh, people were going to bow to him, okay? And, uh, but God hid from him how he was going to get there. And so oftentimes, and, and you, you need to, to underline this in, in your Bible, verse number 17, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? God has hid some things from you. I remember um, in, in 2007, uh, when I had diverticulitis and my appendix had burst, I had to undergo surgery uh, but I was told some things were hidden from me, okay? And my sister had gone through the same sort of thing. And she hid it from me, okay? What she hid and what the doctors hid or did not reveal to me or tell me was this, that when I woke up from the, the operation that I was going to have a colonoscopy bag attached to me. Amen. Uh, had I known that, perhaps I would not have went through with it. Had I known the, 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 the pain and the issues that I were going to have right after that, would I have done it? My sister Edna, who had gone through that, after it was all over, she said, George, I, I just didn't want to tell you because if I had told you the whole thing, you may have opted not to have it and you would have died. Well, that's love. Sometimes God uh, is showing his love in not telling us that we're going to, as Joseph was, uh, Joseph ended up uh, being sold into bondage and Joseph ended up being uh, accused of rape and Joseph ended up being thrown into, into uh, prison and, and all of these things and forgotten about mom and dad thinking he was dead and all of this stuff. If God told you the things that you were going to experience in this life before your promise would occur, would you go through with it? Amen. The things, amen, for us to get the blessings of the Lord, uh, it, it, is, it is a journey to that blessing, amen. And so sometimes God hides these things and he hides them because he loves you. He hides them because he simply wants you to have faith in, in him, trust him, believe in him. And, it, and if you get to the place where, where, where you, you don't know, amen, um, if you're going to make it, just, just hold on. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. Because, amen, the scripture says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. If he told you that there was going to be weeping in the night, if he told you of how long the night was going to be, perhaps you would not go through. But it's love oftentimes when he hides some things from, from you. Oh, that's that's a word from the Lord. Amen. I, I had not really thought about that until we read this scripture. And he says, shall I hide the thing from Abraham, that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Sometimes he has to even hide our success from us because some of us would mess it up, amen. We would mess it up knowing that we're going to be great. We would do like, like Joseph and tell his brothers and make his brothers angry when you start telling what the Lord has told you. So sometimes you've got to hold off on telling everything that's in your heart or everything that God has told you. Now, note, note this, that God will be whatever you need him to be. He is simply letting you know that things will work out, but he doesn't tell you every step that you're going to take. He doesn't tell you every adversary that's going to come in your life. 
He doesn't tell you every challenge, every person that's going to hate your guts or every person that's going to stab you in the back or every person that's going to smile in your face. And amen, there is a lie behind it. He's not going to tell you all of those things because some of those things can become a discouragement to you. So God says, well, I can't, I can't tell my brother everything. I got to hold some things from him, or I got to keep some things from my sister, amen, because if I told her that that friend, the one that uh, she believes is her, 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 her close friend is really an enemy, God says, I can't tell her that because she's got to go through these things and she's got to mature She's got to learn some things. So God is maturing us. He's telling us, I've got a place. He told the children of Israel, I'm going to take you to, the, to Canaan land. But brothers and sisters, it took 40 years, 40 years for that, from the beginning of that promise that he told the, the, when the, um, Moses, a man began to lead them. It was a 40 year journey. And there were times in which they, they, they encircled the mountain time and time again. Amen. If he had told them these, these, these new converts, these, the, the, these, these young folk, if he had told them, well, on, our, on your journey, uh, you're going to have to fight the Amalekites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. If he had told them that, they may have said, well, hey, I, I don't know if I, want, if I want the new land. I'm not sure. So God hides some things from us. And it's for our good. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. I'm out of time. Amen. Not out of word, but out of time. Amen. I want you to be encouraged today and know that God keeps his promises. And if he has, has prophet, if there has been a prophecy uh, given to you, and it was a, a prophet, a, a prophecy that came from the Lord. Let me let me uh, uh, have that uh, say that in quotes. If it came from the Lord, it is going to take place. You'll get to the place where God has has promised you. If you're asking God for something, I declare today that you need to have faith in Him. You need to believe that he is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Let's pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we had this evening to come to the people of God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the things that you've done for them. Now, Father, there are promises that have been given. Father, we find hundreds and hundreds of promises in your word. You said in your word, Lord, that your word would not return unto you void, but it will, will accomplish that which it has been set forth to do. So today we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you manifest yourself, Lord Jesus, and all of the promises God, help us to embrace those promises. And Father, if it means that I've got to go through the valley to get to the mountaintop, if it means that I've got to go through the flood to get the promises of, of you, if it means that I've got to go through, through poverty to get to wealth, if it means that I've got to go through sickness to know that you are Jehovah Rapha, amen. Father, we pray that we as your people will embrace your promises and embrace the God of the promise and stand still and believe that you're going to do everything that you have declared that you would do. Now, Father, we have faith in you. We have confidence in you. We trust you, Lord. And so let it be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Sunday, Sunday, our service, our, our, the servant on Sunday or the, the messenger on, on uh, this coming Sunday is going to be, uh, the message is going to be brought uh, through Lady Robin, amen. And so if you're in our area, 
Uh, our church address again is 9350 um, East Brown Road in Mesa, Arizona. And that is off of Ellsworth. It is east of Ellsworth on Brown Road. We'd love to see you, amen. We'd love to, to, to shake your hand or, or, or uh, do a fist bump or however you want to do it, do some elbows, I don't know. But we'd love to see you uh, with us, amen. We're looking forward to all the great things God's going to do in your life. And we thank you in advance, amen, for uh, supporting us and ask that God's blessings will be upon you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name.